it does actually provide these values. So cell width and cell height. Right. Now, because we know that each of our tiles within our map is going to be 32 by 32, we're going to have to do a bit of. Um, we're going to have to do some kind of collision detection in order to make it work properly. So we're going to do that in another tutorial. But for the time being, we're just going to get this working. So for BI is going to be a new bitmap data and in this bitmap data I'm going to pass in cell width and cell height which is going to provide us with the dimensions for this particular bitmap. Now we know it's going to be transparent and we also know that the fill colour is going to be white which is its default. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy pixels and we're going to get the sprite sheet. We want to get so the rectangle, which is going to be a new rectangle, we're going to get the index of this first here. So we're going to say um, how should we do this? Yeah, so we're going to do indexes first. And then obviously this is going to either be X or Y, so first of all it might be a better idea that I provide that. So if our point is equal to indexes first, so whatever the first state of it is. Um, And the cell width and the cell height. Destination point, well, that's going to be zero, zero. And that's it, really. So now what we want to do is we want to then provide that bitmap into this animation here. So this is probably the worst idea in the world. So instead, what I'm going to use is sprites instead so that we can actually add this bitmap to this animation. So now I'm just going to say add child, new bitmap, that's going to be BI. So we're going to replace it basically every time. And I'm going to add the child. So every time we switch state, we're replacing the state of this animation to whatever that state is. So what we're going to do is in player, we're going to say public var anim, which is going to take a type of animation. And when we create it, what we want to do is we want to be able to provide that information. So in here, I'm going to say the sprite sheet for this player is going to be type string sprite sheet path. So anim is equal to new animation. We're going to load it from the assets. So Import assets, openfl.assets here. I know it's taken a while. <laughs> it's going to be a spreadsheet path like that, and then we want to load the image. easier, so like that. 
Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to actually create that player and then obviously Maybe we provide an initial value of this. I just double click that in there. So the initial value would actually be the middle one here. So let's provide another value, which is going to be an optional start index. It's going to be an end. We're going to say start index here. So it's going to, what it's going to do is it's going to take the first index that it starts with when you switch the state initially. So in this case, it's actually going to be the index number one because that's the center one here. If that makes sense. So this is index zero. This is index zero. Index one. Index two. Right. As I mentioned earlier. So that's how we're going to initialize the player. And then obviously we need to draw that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a public function draw. Um, so we'll say the unit should really be. Mm, unit shouldn't really be a sprite. So yeah, let's take a scene. And we'll say scene dot add child, and then that makes sense, I think. So when we come to draw that, so if we go back to our main, we've got our camera, which we have set up here. So what we want to do is in our map, we want to actually draw our player onto that map, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm, not, I'm now going to create our player. Just so we're going to have a player. So we're going to take our player. So it's going to be a new player. The image is going to be one of these sprites here. So let's say it's this one here. So I'm going to say image slash sprite sheet slash healer f dot png and we also want the sprite sheet path which is the JSON file we were talking about earlier so we're going to take that as well. So info slash player animation dot json. Then what we want to do is we want to draw the animation. So we're going to say player.draw and we're going to place the map in there. So when that is created, we're going to draw it onto the map. Let's also have two more parameters there so that we can provide the default location. So let's say default x, which is int, Float actually makes more sense. And default y float. So let's say anm.x is equal to default x, anm.y is equal to default y. Right? So when we create, so when we draw the player for the first time, that's what we draw. So do, 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 do. let's go back to our ma main. So in here, we're going to provide a default location. So let's say the default location on the map is going to be um, 64 by 64. Right. 
and essentially that's all we really need to do from now on so now let's just see if it works so I'm going to go into here command prompt do hxlib run apfl test project.xml make let's see if this works like I did something wrong. 35, where is it? Oh. Didn't initialize that correctly. Oh god, no. <laughs> Go away. Is a very access is not allowed on blah blah blah. So yeah, those need to be dynamic. I keep forgetting that actually. Th these need to be dynamic. Why did I just do that for? So yeah, those two were dynamics. We need to do that um, so that it doesn't do that. So that it doesn't detect that as an error. Um, those attributes need to be fixed. Method get map, yes, of course. Unit thirteen void int. Oh, yeah, because of the property, of course. I'm just going to provide some basic fixes for the type boom. We'll change it, change it around afterwards, but at a later point in time, even. But we know it's not going to be exactly like this. So max health. Well, oh, why do I keep doing that? It's an int. We're going to turn at max health. Um, then in player, we're going to do the same to attributes. Where is it? Here. Missing function. This is going to take a while. God damn it, Higgs. In fact, never mind. remove them as properties for the time being because it's just going to take too long. I just wish Flash Develop was able to generate property functions and values. At some point it might do, that would be un that would be nice. Okay. Still complaining. Line thirty nine and forty six. Thirty nine, forty six. And also needs to be a dynamic. Now it should work. <laughs> yes, there we go. There you go. Obviously, we can't move that player around yet, but we do have it working. It is now on the screen, as you can see. But not quite in the center. So that was a take a look at. 
animations obviously we haven't completed it yet we still need to be able to move the player around so that we can obviously move it and also move the cameras according to where the player is and stuff like that so that's going to be that's what's going to happen in the next tutorial but for the time being that is where I'm going to finish off so thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.